The Spin-Off Podcast Network. This is Kiwi is back for a brand new season with more inspiring kōrero from special guests including rugby player, father and role model TJ Peronara. My family bring me joy. Rugby brings me joy too, but it's not the same joy as my family brings me. And global dancer and choreographer Kirsten Dodgen. For some reason people think I'm very intimidating. Listen to the new season of This Is Kiwi, brought to you by the Spin-Off Podcast Network in collaboration with Kiwi Bank. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. The Land Down Under has never been easier to reach. United Airlines has more flights between the U.S. and Australia than any other U.S. airline, so you can fly nonstop to destinations like Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane. Explore dazzling cities, savor the very best of Aussie cuisine, and get up close and personal with the wildlife. Who doesn't want to hold a koala? Go to united.com slash Australia to book your adventure. New from the spin-off business editor Chris Schultz, together with Kiwi Bank, comes Stock Take, a weekly newsletter about the people behind the businesses driving Aotearoa, along with stories about how forces affecting the economy will impact the lives of New Zealanders. Sign up to Stock Take now at thespinoff.co.nz forward slash newsletters. If you love the spin-off and want to support what we do, one of the best things you can do is to let a friend or relative know about us. It costs you nothing, but it means the world to us. I don't know what we're doing. Welcome what, us. What, welcome what, us. What, what, hold on, hold on. Okay. Tia here. What's up? Can you cut hair? No, definitely uh, not. Oh, liar! 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 Welcome along to The Real Pod. This is your reality TV recap podcast and other things. My name is Jane Yee, joined by Alex Casey and Duncan Grieve, and also T.I. Head Butler. How are you, T.I. Head? I'm really well. That's a good 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 wave. (laughs) (laughs) The audience at home will love that one. (laughs) How are you, Alex? Don't wave. Use your voice. I'm good. Yeah, good. (laughs) Land wave. And and Duncan, you? Yeah, I'm cracking. Great. How are you, Jane? I'm also cracking, but in a (laughs) different way. Cracking on. I'm not cracking. I'm like cracking apart at the Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it's so similar. What about cracking on? You're cracking on? I'm always cracking on. Don't you worry. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> cracking up. <laughs> uh, we are going to be recapping the Block NZ week three shortly. Uh, but first of all, Alex needs to acknowledge, oh. acknowledge our friends in Wellington. My friends in Wellington. <laughs> you did a posh thing. I did a posh thing. I did it <laughs> once again, a salon. <laughs> A salon event, but not like that for you Love Island heads out there. <laughs> it was this beautiful collaboration that the spin-off has going with pirate <laughs> between two people. Oh, God. No, no, no. <laughs> it, was this, it was a collaboration event between the spin-off and Pirate and Queen, this great like, events company in Wellington, and it was you write a letter to your unfulfilled idea and you read it out in front of an audience at Meow Bar. The most it, Wellington place of all. It was so flash. You look at all the other names. I'm like, wow. Incredible. How'd you make that line up? CEO, hit any car. I was just, I was just like, what? I was the, the mince man, which <laughs> won't make sense to anyone who's not in the spin-off Slack. But it's, some of you may have seen the news stories about the New World, which I think is in Wellington, where they make the mince into like a little man with a parsley goatee. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> <laughs> I had a parsley goat sitting on the stage. But what made me feel so much better was that there were cornies in the crowd. I talked to Julia Howard before the show. Maeve was a corny on the door, and she knew that I was shaking like a leaf. I was freaking out, and she was like, you're going to be fine. And then when I came out, I got heckled by Demi, who yelled, cornies! (laughs) Just like (laughs) she couldn't contain it, and I just felt very heartened. You felt held. I just felt so hard. I felt very safe, and I just I, there might have even been more corns out there. I don't know. I was very overwhelmed, but just wanted to say thank you to all those angels who came out. We received a late night text straight after the event um, from Alex, just saying cornies are the cutest. Someone yelled out cornies. Well, you knew it was Demi. Yeah, it was, she, yeah. Just, she just said that. Yeah, I know. I'm <laughs> just saying that just to further amplify it. Alex's first thought was to let us know how amazing the Cornies are. It's amazing. And even backstage, Courtney was talking about how she had done something with you, Duncan, and that you were swarmed by... And she's like, who are these Cornies? That this, they wouldn't leave Duncan alone. And I was like, they're here tonight. Hey, Courtney's <laughs> just letting you know, Duncan and I are in Wellington 
We are. This week. So just Watch look, out. look out for us. You will probably see us on Cuba Street because that's where you see people. Jane will have a really cool new haircut job done by Alex and I. <laughs> yeah. Check that. Check for perm, that. And perm then, and a bleach. <laughs> and then fixed up by TI hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also came up with a new sign-off. When I was leaving the event, I went, stay corny, and did a piece like John Lennon. Wow. John Lennon, I should say. <laughs> I want you to reconsider changing the piece to Finger Guns and to hark back to your... Well, I did the Finger place. Guns on arrival. Oh, okay. So you've got to have a... You arrive with the guns, Finger yeah. Guns, and you, and guns. you leave with that, the piece kind out. Of, and you leave with Pete. There's that's, a symmetry. That's, wow, that's, that's a, a whole story there. Just with the fingers yeah. in the salon. Six words. <laughs> Six words get it up on the site. <laughs> <laughs> arrive with guns, leave with, with peace. peace. Okay. Ideally, don't arrive. Corny. Don't arrive with guns. Okay, make it seven words and put finger guns in there. <laughs> what is happening? Okay, um, we we need to talk about the mass singer because I was up till two a.m. a mere eight hours and four score and ten ago, um, having just watched the mass singer and just my mind was a buzz. The second episode was a curve ball. Balls. Balls. <laughs> balls. balls. More Jane. than one ball. Was it? <laughs> Did you watch? You haven't seen it, have you? No, I, I saw that the guy had been eliminated or exposed or, or otherwise defenestrated. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I kind of loved that, that they had like someone like him on the, on the program who, who, I assume he can't sing. No, no. very bad. No, but, but he performed the hell out of it. He really yeah, did. He, really went he, for he it. was the most animated performer I've ever seen on the show. He was probably the most obvious <laughs> performer as to who it was. But did you guess him last week? I don't remember his name coming. No, no. but last week we only met the first half. So the second week was oh. the next six contestants. Uh-huh. And they're all bloody head scratches apart from maybe one. Well, obviously guy, and then you've got your thoughts on on Shaggy Sheepdog. Haven't you? Yeah. Are we just gonna? We're just gonna. Oh, okay. Let's, 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 let's just get. Let's just get guy out of the way first, yeah. because we know who he is. So he was the Sergeant Pie, or... Sergeant Steak and Cheese. Yeah. Um, he sang it's more war stuff. He sang Shears. Uh, if I could turn back time, with a lot of confidence. Um, but Sharon, having hosted a radio shows with him, knew immediately, like before he started performing, like in the, the first word of his like pre-roll package. Same with James. They both mm. picked up who it was immediately. <laughs> he's not like he's not hard to pick in, in any form. He's got that big honking voice. Yeah. He, you know, he never stops talking. He's like seven feet tall. Sharon was like, I'm, I'm worried I know who this is, <laughs> with, even when they, like, they did the teaser and the coming up. And then... She heard the pack and she was like, I'm pretty sure I know who this is. And then he walked out and she was like, as soon as I saw the feet, <laughs> as soon as I saw the feet, I knew. <laughs> oh, dear. The costume was funny. Like, also, it's quite impressive that basically all he had to work with was his tiny hands sticking out of the side of the pipe and his feet. And it was still like, that's Guy Williams. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> Everything about the way he was gesturing. And, yeah, no, it was definitely Guy. And it was Guy. And he is now gone. Is it rude that they made the like um, alluded to always blow on the pie, <laughs> like with oh in there? Did they w- always blow on the guy? Wow, I just you know I double on tendre. I didn't. <laughs> I actually didn't pick up on that. Oh. I just if there's ever an opportunity for lewdness, yeah, yeah, <laughs> blue girl over here, <laughs> and you're wearing blue. And so. I had, oh, we haven't even talked about. It. I had to go home on Thursday because I tied, I dyed my tongue and teeth and lips blue. Yeah. You I, had wouldn't, to go I home? wouldn't hear the end of it. Yeah, because I wouldn't hear the end of it. I had to you go home. It was a workplace it. hazard. Because I had a cupcake yes. brought to us by Anita, Anita Wiglet. Wiglet. Exactly a week ago today, then? Well. Or was it? Oh, no, no, we record. No, don't worry. No, no, it doesn't matter. Maybe. Irrelevant to them. <laughs> <That's completely, laughs> I'm sorry. And I was like, look at these gorgeous cupcakes left. I wonder why there's only black and dark forest green <laughs> left. I'll just eat the dark forest green one. Didn't think about it. And then Toby Manhire walked in and was like, you look like a lovely avatar. And I thought he was just talking about my gorgeous blue jumper, which I tend to wear. But I, my teeth, tongue, and whole mouth. And wouldn't come off. Died, wouldn't go, wouldn't, I had to go home, scrub, scrub, scrub. Took took hours. Hours? And that's... Is this from the television New Zealand promotional depth? Yeah. I don't know, that's a bit of a... Bit was of that, a was it an intentional was stitch, up. stitch up or was it just a sniffu? I think it was a stitch up. <laughs> Possibly by the colleagues as well for just leaving that one. They knew I would eat it. Yeah, they, they do know. You always eat it. But Godspeed to whoever ate the black one. I'll oh, just say that. dear. Feel free. Oh, look. 
Uh, you you sent us a photo, and I have to argue with you. I hate to argue with you, Alex. What are you going to say? It was green, not blue. Your tongue was green. Was green. Oh well, green <laughs> blue, same thing. Masked singer. Masked singer. Okay. <laughs> green blue, same thing. Um, blue penguin. Uh, what do we know about blue penguin? Who are you? The guess was Amanda Billing, which I thought was a decent guess. I thought mm. so too. She is multidisciplinary. Mm. I know she can sing because I see, I've I seen her in Chicago. Yes, yes. <laughs> I feel like you missed an opportunity to do like a yank accent there. Chicago. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there I, you have, go. I have an alternative guess. Yes. My guess is Lisa Chapel. <gasps> McLeod's daughter's currently on Shortland Street. She has had a, a singing career. In fact, I interviewed her when I was on Music Tally about her singing career. Were you one new I actually belly. was, yes, I know. I look so like a <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> man, that was a good voice. Yes, alongside the first man, Clark Gaford. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Lisa Chapel. <laughs> Different parts you can't took, say anything hey? about him on a podcast anymore. <laughs> 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 we haven't got enough money for that. Um, Lisa Chapel uh, also teaches at Pack. Oh. So there was the Monday to Friday, Monday to Friday, I'm at school. To pack. That's mm-hmm. how you say it. Is that, oh, how do you say it? No, that seems right. To pack. Oh. <laughs> the generational divide once more. Oh, wow. I don't know. I don't think I've ever said it out loud before, but there you go. <laughs> to pack. Sorry to call you out, Jane. Okay. No, that's right. <laughs> We're all, life is a, a, a long lesson, you know? <laughs> um, so that's my guest, Lisa Chapel. What did you think about Dreamt of Life as an Emperor? Performed in front of sold out crowds, would she have done that? I oh, don't pick holes. Well, you're the you're the clue maestro. Maybe just... McLeod's daughter's Antarctica. Life. Seems like something would happen. I felt a chill in the air, and my guess, Tina Cross. <laughs> oh, of course. In which case, of course. look out, me. Yeah. I'm going down again. <laughs> Always comes back to the pod. If you don't get that reference, uh, Alex, when she had COVID, decided it was a great time to interview Tina Cross and um, did so via Zoom before kind of vomiting in her mouth a bit and then fainting <laughs> whilst on the Zoom. Just a big Tina Cross so, fan. It's quite overwhelming, so right? Tina. A wave of craziness. <laughs> okay. Playing Mantis sang Cat Stevens, Father and Son. Oh, Beautiful. Tear-jerking song. They've got better singers this time Much around, Much better right? singers. Yeah. yeah, I mean, obviously a few not as good, um, but definitely a greater ratio of good singers to crap ones for sure. Um, the, the Playing Mantis is my celebrity crush on the show, I'll say that first. Yeah. Is quite tall. Yeah. I have no idea who it is. Well, are they guess Jermaine Clement. Is he in New... new or was he well, in he did come he back was. for the premiere of New Tuesday. Look, I'm not opposed to this idea because I went back and listened to the singing after the guest and I was like, that really sounds like Jermaine Clement's voice. Really? Yeah. I feel like it's such a coup for it to be him. Well, they had Ray Starby on it last year. <sighs> yeah. I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> Jermaine picks his battles, you but, know, but, in a way that, that... but they do shoot it in like 10 minutes, right? Yeah. yeah. I also think they, uh, I th- uh, my theory is that they kind of decide the order of who's going home when, depending on schedules mm. and things. Availability. Because they have mm. to record the songs. Guy's not that busy, though. No, I know, but I think they know he would have been guessed really, really quickly. Yeah. I, I think you're right. It's actually, it's improbable. It's like, it's like guessing Lord or the backup singer from LAB. Like, they're too famous <laughs> to be... On the show. <laughs> the only thing that would be cool is, like, he's got kids, right? And I feel like that's the thing. That's why cool people do it. Yeah. That's why, what's his face? Who Look, won last time? Oh, no, 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 no. Not that guy. Not Jason Kerrison. Not Kierson. Jason Kerrison. A Troy Kingy. Troy Kingy, yeah. <laughs> but you also, everyone, everyone, has a, everyone has a price, right? And this show does well. Mm. This show's worth some money. It's True. pretty quick for them to shoot. They're not in production for a long time. Uh, surely Jermaine Clement doesn't have a price that you can measure in NZD. <laughs> I don't know why that sounded so rude. I, don't know. I do know why it sounded so rude. I feel like that should be used as an overseas yeah. <laughs> come on line within fi- fi- financial trading circles. I tell you what, Forex if there circles. was if there was a New Zealander in Love Island, NZD would be a thing. But I don't Look think anyone Island, knows about it, it apart from New Zealand. It's like people aren't aware that we have our own currency. They're like, you what? Um, also, just thinking out loud about Jermaine, 
obviously has a gripe with TVNZ. They turned down Flight of the Concords. Probably wouldn't do any TVNZ reality. Has worked with three before. Mm-hmm. Had did that collaboration for like Red Nose Day. Flight of the Concords wrote a charity song for them, mm-hmm. and that was aired on three. That's true. Well, it's a paranormal. I take it back. Yeah. No, nothing. No, no, it's fine. Maybe it's Joel Little. See, that was my guess. Look, Joel oh, Little. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm good. It's quite From, a deep voice. I don't know if Joel, know. Joel Little's got a deep singing None voice. None of the clues flew away to a new land in the UK. Got ca- like didn't succeed in the UK. Got can- out came the door. home. I wondered if Flick was like got a got a flick, got a movie here. You know who didn't succeed in the UK? Flew to the UK and didn't succeed is Chris Warner. Oh, interesting. Dr. Leapt onto the stage at 18. There was something about a beautiful ladybird in the crowd that. This is going to be an hour long podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This is really. This is like. Also, actually... if it is Jermaine, that will be international news, right? They'll make the proper sites with that if it is. So. Hats off. Hats, Hats, off. Hats off to the crew. Mask, Hats mask off. for ages. Wow. Hats off to the crew. Uh, Regal Rose sang Megan, a Megan Trainor song. It wasn't Megan Trainor song, wasn't it? Yeah. I sort of, like, again, this is one o'clock in the morning for me. Um, Life in the Art, something about flowers at the door. This is the one who I think I know who it is. Uh, was a 12 year old standout in her field. Um, but then something about growing tall and new growth and opportunities went, fell short. And went to the super city. <laughs> There was something about it started with mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the mm. something or other. And yeah. then all, the, the the final clue was like, I've given you all the clues, so what now? Yeah, okay. So do you know who it is? No. I do. I know who it is. I'm going to put $3.50 on this. <gasps> Antonia Brebel. She was in her first role when she was 12. She was in W, she was a What Now host. She did oh. WNTV in the afternoons. She was in a TV series called Mirror Mirror, and she was also on Super City. Ah, oh, it's done. done. It's done. done. It's done. I thought it was Jennifer Ward Leland. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty kind of similar. <laughs> that's amazing, Jane. Yeah, that's and, really and not clever. a bad, like, g- quite a good singer. Yeah, that well, not, she like, does was... strike me as like a triple threat kind of a person. You know, she yeah. probably dance as well. Um, I love that. I love that. So that's done. Week week two. Congrats, done. Jane. Thank you, Shaggy Sheepdog. Total Eclipse of the Heart, great tune, hard to sing. Killed it. Killed also, it. pitched the voice way down in the talking because as soon as he started singing, it was Jason Gunn. <laughs> oh, so you're on with them. They think it's I'm Jason. I'm 100. I think it's Sam Wallace. What? <laughs> oh, no, he's on TVNZ, isn't he? Is he no, but it? I don't think he is because he's, he's, on, he's on NZME Radio, but I don't know if he's got any current gig on TVNZ. Okay, reason being, the breakfast thing. Um, Jason talk- Gunn did a breakfast radio Okay, show. I know, I'm not... I'm just offering Might another option. Might still do one? I feel like some Christchurch, yeah, more of in Christchurch. Oh, probably. That sort of vibe. Uh, so he talked about, they talked about being sunny, something about being sunny, um, and then <gasps> something about treasure, so the treasure island. But Jason has Jason's Gunn's been on, on Treasure Island on too? Old treasure yeah. Island. Okay. I'm no sellout. Throw me a bone and chew the fat away, I thought was weird. I thought that was to do with maybe a breakfast show or something, talking, mm. chatty chat. Kept iconic coat for many years, something about new frontiers. I mean, Jason Gunn is always innovating. He's he just written a children's book. Yeah. And he has a YouTube channel. Yeah, he does. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Look, <laughs> probably Jason Gunn. Oh, it's, 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 like, voice wise, sounded like Jason Gunn. And a good singer. I but, loved it. But they can't be guessing them this well this early on because basically, as soon as the, the panel are guessing them, I'm like, eh, it's, it's too soon to be right. Did they do that last time? Then they changed them every week and then come, I mean, I can't remember. Uh, anyway, well, we'll wait and see. Um, I did entertain the idea of it being Mike Hosking, and I have decided to continue to think that when I watch it because it's really fun when mm. you just think of someone that you definitely think would be, like, mortified to do the show and then go in your head, you could be that person, though, because I don't know who you are. It'd be a great brand move move, move for him, <laughs> I think, because he's so, he's so isolated now, like... You can't really imagine him doing anything but being angry for two and a half hours on the radio every morning. And I think he needs to soften. Like, you know, he used to be on Breakfast and Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And, you know, he's been all over the shop. Come on, Mike. Mike Hosking singing Total Eclipse of the Heart dressed as a shaggy sheepdog. <sighs> it be might be beautiful. a bit of a leap as far as rehab <laughs> goes. Uh, finally, there's the, the monster I didn't catch his Magic monster. Magic monster. Magic monster. Magic <laughs> monster. Uh, mystical creature. Um, a powerful mister. 
and something about a Mrs. Monster to be. Mm. Any thoughts? No idea. The antelope makes me shake in my fur. I don't know what so that is. So they were guessing sport like an all black yeah. or someone. But he was a good singer though. But well, I mean, it, is, it is possible to be good at rugby and good at singing. Know. Is that true? I don't know. I have no idea. Okay, my guess is someone from Nisian Mystic um, because they referenced Mystical. They also had a song called Mr. Mr. or something. Uh, and mm. th- those fellas can sing. Those fellas can sing. They can sing. I don't know if it's our, <gasps> because mm. he, I think this uh, magical monster, mystical monster, whatever he is, he had quite a deep voice, and our is slightly higher pitched, but it could be one of the others. Donald I've just realised the singing, Pat singing Junior. to crowds, nothing new, could be singing the national anthem in front of a crowd. Oh, so it could black. be could be an all black still, yeah. I don't know. There's good. There's good. There hasn't been an athlete yet, you know. Got to have an athlete. Okay. Shall we move on to the block? Yeah. God, it's good though. It's isn't good. It? It's, it's good. so good. It's a real disappointment that someone who had that sort of natural ability didn't play a hell of a lot more for his country. Fast bowler Heath Davis was a cult hero of New Zealand cricket in the 1990s, thanks to his unpredictable performances and larger-than-life personality. Off the field, however. It was a different story, one that hasn't been told until now. Watch this special episode of Scratched, Aotearoa's Lost Sporting Legends, on the spin-off today, made with the support of New Zealand On Air. I felt there was this part of my life I needed to express now. I was sick of hiding it. At Z, we're all about moving with the times. And now it's time to be part of the climate change solution and move on from fossil fuels. As a company providing fuel to people all over the country, we also know we have a real opportunity to lead that change. We're committed to keeping Aotearoa moving by providing the right energy for everyone. We believe that innovation in fuel and how it's used can make a huge difference to our planet. Find out more at z.co.nz. Not only are the Technics A800 backed by Technics legendary quality for a true high fidelity sound, Rolling Stone have given their stamp of approval, announcing the A800s as the best noise cancelling headphones so you can relax and play your favourite songs for up to 50 hours on a single charge. Indulge in superior sound like never before with Technics. Okay, the block. <laughs> na 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 na. Uh, where are we? What's happening? I need what to go to the bathroom. Billy houses. <laughs> I tell you what, <laughs> Keegan's back and I love it. So good to see our Keegs again. <laughs> he is a very different vibe to the wolf. Um, very much the substitute teacher, just sort of rolling on in and going. Calling uh, calling the wolf <laughs> like constantly. <laughs> is this okay? <laughs> uh, and, I, yeah, I forgot how much I loved him. Mm. Um, it made me... Because I, I got thinking about their season, because I know that you're going to start complaining about how all the bathrooms look the same very soon. You know that because I sent a text. Because you sent a text, yeah. but also. Um, remember how Dylan and Keegan built that secret spy room <laughs> in their <laughs> lounge? Like, where's all that stuff? <laughs> we haven't had any nooks nor crannies. Not yet. Not yet. Mm, We've had a lot of totally. curves. A lot of curves and. In window seats. But they had that crazy orange wall. They did some crazy shit in that house. I feel like there was more, you know, you're like. What what was what was the name of that guy that Steve Braun has developed a weird relationship with? He had like a uh, black splash back and stuff. Hayden. Hay, was it Hayden? Hayden, yeah. Hayden. That was really amazing. Yeah. We'd just come along to staff drinks and stuff. It, it wasn't just a black <laughs> splash back. Didn't it say be bold on oh, it? Oh, that's right. Graffiti, graffiti, yeah. Graffiti, yeah. 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 You just don't see that kind of like intentional torching of your chance to win anymore. And then the upstairs sort of master suite was painted entirely black. That's right. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I blame Instagram, you know? I feel like there's a the washing aesthetic. out of the aesthetic across just everyone just does pastel, bloody... People know what's tones. Tre- trendy. Maybe. I, I agree, but I also I also think they are really hamstrung by their suppliers this year. Oh, yeah. Mm. Like, so, well, you know, we talked about it last week. I think that there's just not enough Options. You can sell too much. Right? <laughs> Which... But you can still pop, pop a hand in a wall, you know? Oh, Bill, I'm sure we'll come to that. Yeah, okay. I'm sure we'll come to Building that. Building up to it. Should we go couple by couple? <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> oh, before we do that, I just want to say witty board because I just thought it was a new word that I really enjoyed. That I Is that? Witty board. 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 A, it was uh, Chloe and Ben's secret wall fixing that was uh, their secret weapon because it meant you could 
You didn't have to wait oh, so long. Oh, you could try it. Try it. Rather, rather. Mm. Yeah. Part of the Ryobi family of fine tools, was it? it uh, uh, no, it's, 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 it's a jib alternative. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Missed it, missed it. What was that little weird, like, Ryobi hairdryer they were using to make the plaster dry quicker? I think it's a dryer. Was it? Like a heat they gun. They have a little funny hot pink, hot pink number for a while there <laughs> before they found the real tools. <laughs> there are many moments I would have missed this week because uh, I watched three in a row and sort of zoned in and out and in and out and in and out. It's it's that kind of a season so far, it feels like. It's quite the, – the, there isn't – there's not you have interpersonal chaos and the rooms are quite similar, so there's yeah. It just sort of happens. What one quick thing before we get into it. I, I really enjoy obviously it's bad for uh, did he actually have COVID or was he was he a close oh, No, contact? I think he had he had COVID because they talked about him being unwell. But I loved um seeing his tool shape. Like what yes. you know? Yes. That was like so amazing. It was the most like it was exactly what you'd expect. It was also like the most like maxed out, hard out. Every space on the wall, he has every tool in the shed. Mm. It's like, wow. We're talking about Wolfie, by the way. Yeah, very much like Granddad's house vibes, like, you know, the the workshop under the house kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, but just the most triple XL, like, luxe version. Yeah. And the idea that although he probably moved there just for the shot, but that he could be isolating in that shed, <laughs> <laughs> just tinkering away, <laughs> whittling. You can almost imagine that every room in his house is like that. <laughs> yeah, <true. laughs> whittling on the witty board. <laughs> okay, we'll start with Ben and Quinn, my favourites. I love these two. Yeah. I love the edit that they're getting with their being really pleased with themselves whenever they say a word that's more than two syllables. It's so, <laughs> so cute. Um, Marty, though. He is not the man he once was, is he? Very grumpy. I feel like he's he, under the pump. He, he does feel like he's got an anti-authoritarian streak. <laughs> he's Scottish, which is very Scottish. <laughs> yeah, <you know. laughs> definitely voted Leave. <laughs> <laughs> when he asked when they're putting in three skylights, I've been practicing my Marty impression. He said, "Who long it take you to the minute?" <laughs> wow, wow, you're good. You're really <laughs> good. You. I suppose you can understand everything. Can he you says. do that again? Yeah. Who long it take you to the minute? <laughs> wow. That is Was that good? good? Yes. We, I, feel I feel like, like we should interview you in character as Marty. I think we could also it. now offer our services as a production studio for Ireland should they need to so- outsource anything uh, because we have someone who sounds... Sorry, to Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> but someone's done in... I probably have. <laughs> the finger. <laughs> we did over the finger. <laughs> guilty finger. Someone's done something. <laughs> someone's done something. So yeah, we can just, so you can do man. Irish and you can do Scottish. That's great. You've got to do Welsh, though. That's quite oh, difficult. Oh, Welsh is very difficult. You can uh, you can learn from pa- Paige. <laughs> I can learn from Paige. That um, was actually, a, what was that, Brummy? What, what, where's um, Adam from? Newcastle. New- we Manson. are talking about Love Island, Love Island again. And even though we, we swore we wouldn't because Did I think I'm not up to date. Well, yeah, but I mean, saying pages from Wales is not a spoiler. It's just, it feels like it could very quickly slide Escalate. into a spoiler. <laughs> okay, so let's just shimmy back to Ben and Quinn. I'm back, I'm back. Um, poo chat. Poo chat, yeah. Um, ablution was not the right word, but feculence is a good one, by the way. Is ablution not right? No, ablution, I looked it up. <laughs> and ablution is like a block it's a, or the act of washing. Oh, yeah. oh so when people say do your ablutions... They're talking it's about not. cleansing themselves. Because you've been doing the wrong thing <laughs> on command. Have you been doing <laughs> something else? <laughs> in the shower, though. What you've been doing is feculence. Um, <laughs> hopefully not in the shower. Uh, I've played the thing. I haven't. Being in the showers, though, teeny, teeny, tiny tiles all over their bathroom. Oh, the smallest too, too Kit many. Kat finger tiles. Finger yeah. always makes me want a Kit Kat. Yum. 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 Just like a chocky. classic Kit Kat. When you get the family block that's just like the really jumbo Kit Kat, but it's all the fingers mm. all the way down. Mm. Mm. Divine. That's decadence. You know what I like? <laughs> Maltesers. <laughs> My all-time favourite. <laughs> My all-time favourite, and I think you'll appreciate this, Duncan, having lived in the United Kingdom. <laughs> walnut whip. Yum! Walnut whips are so good. I don't like walnuts. Nothing. What? No. I know them from Scotland. Marty will know. Okay, Marty would know. Marty. <laughs> <laughs> what? As a child, when my mum's friends would come over from the UK, because my mum's from London, they would bring her walnut whips and she would stash them in the bottom drawer of her bedside table. And oh. I w- would go in and... Prying little fingers, are, would, we, are we talking? I would, like, steal them. <gasps> and I just had that overwhelm. Like, I didn't, I couldn't make the logic 
of A, sentences like right now, but B, of like, she's going to notice. Like, I knew she was going to notice, but the temptation was too much. And I'd... I don't... I do it, knew it. <laughs> it's a beautiful cone shaped yeah, chalky. It's a like a hunk. single serve. Yeah. Wow. With a walnut on top, get rid of that guy. Inside, a kind of a marshmallowy, like a meringue. foamy Yummy. meringue. So unbelievable. Delicious. You know what else is good? Every Maltesers. Christmas. Yeah, I mean, apart from. The, the, <laughs> Are you going to say the chocolate orange? I was. Why would I talk about that? No, but I just know because that's a very English thing as well. I get it every Christmas. Nikki gets me. Gets me. Love now, that. Does it have what is that? Because I've coveted a, that for a long time, but I've never researched I mean, it's it. Big bickies. So it's is it like, Megabix? Well, but probably probably 20? no, no. I'd say it'd be around ten spot. You have to get it from one of your basically. Your shopping shopping colours. Colours. It's, it's all chocolate, but the cool thing you do is like it, it comes in a sort of foil wrap, and you go. And on the table, and it kind of splits into pieces and then sort of falls apart into these beautiful little segments. So, the segments, do they have an orange sort of jelly in the No, inside? no, it's all orange, chalky. Orange flavor flavored chalk. chalky. Oh. You can get the milk or the dark, you should always get the milk. But the um, there's like, it looks sort of like, it's like ribbed, <laughs> like an orange. And then it's, <laughs> I'm so sorry. And then it's got that middle sort of. Like a chocolate version of the stringy central core wow. of an orange. Yeah, it's really like sophisticated chocolate technology. I don't think that there is enough innovation in chocolate in this country. We're very, very stuck to like blocks. I think well, we need or to just some crossovers, like all these crossover yeah. events. You, you know, know what is innovative? The curly whirly. Yes, yes. wonderful chocolate. <laughs> That is design. Sorry, that might have been that picky, is structure. <laughs> and that is affordable. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great price. If you can, if you can find them still, God, yeah. God forbid. I feel like these three chocolates that we're talking about really represent <laughs> us as people. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is the curly whirly. I'm the walnut whip. And you're the uh, the chalk orange. Yeah. 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 What um, about Monster Munch? Yum. That's a chippy, isn't it? Yep. Okay. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Really? Is yeah, that it's, from a, it's a generation thing. Sure it's, was. It's, it's if you've been to Tarangi, <laughs> you'll see the um, the Monster Munch um, roundabout. You know the roundabout with the the big stalks and oh, the yeah. shapes. You know the abstract art roundabout. Yeah. Um, those Aussie. it's, it's uh, common parlance. It's monster, the Monster Munch roundabout because of the shape of the tops of the structures are like what Monster Munch. Oh, <laughs> be sure the artist like. loves that. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, just quickly, I know this is a public service. <laughs> this is a public service for you, Alex. My mm. computer screen has gone dead because we've spent so long talking about chockies. Um If you're after a delicious, exotic UK <laughs> orange chalk treat that has got a jelly in it, yes. Jaffa cakes. Oh, magic, magic <laughs> treat! <laughs> oh my God! Just fanging for chocolate in the corner there. <laughs> I, I don't love a Jaffa cake. What? Can I be honest? What? I prefer a Tunnock's tea cake. Oh, okay. Scott. That's got a whippish. That's got a whippish quality inside it. It's what? almost like a mellow puff, what? but posh. What's your problem? <laughs> Jaffa cakes again was something I built up in my head, and then I ate it, and I was like, oh. What to about, be honest, there's a, a lot of cake and not a lot of Jaffa. Yeah. Have you had a wagon wheel? Yes. No, oh, it's just again. like a digestive. Okay. What? Is no. It? Okay. No, it's marshmallowy and soft and with a little biscuity, uh, thin biscuity running through. Okay, I take it back. Yeah. We should do, we should we should do more <laughs> chocolate <laughs> stuff. Yeah. What about the London lolly shop? Let's yeah. just do a bit of an excursion. Yeah, I think so. They might even. Iron Brew? Oh. Mm. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> Marty knows. Speaking, so back, just back to Marty. I'm just going back to Marie and James' season when he was their builder for the first time. It was very exciting. He'd be like, do things like bring haggis along and wear a kilt. And actually, I think that might have been the Mount Roskill season. Sorry, Sandringham, they called it. The Sandringham <laughs> season. Um, where he was, I don't know whose builder he was there, but he was on that one too. And he just was like a fun times guy and he was enjoying the spotlight. This, he's just, he is. He's gone dark. He must have had children or something. I like it. I like it though. <laughs> I feel like it's cool to, to um, you know, do a heel turn as a builder. I also like seeing people being in a huff with the wolf and like chatting back and yeah. stuff. Oh, Ben yeah. got pretty yeah. bold, eh? I know. Twice. I think Twice. he doorstopped the wolf and he was like, oh, okay, yeah, cheers. Sweet ass. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Yeah. Uh, so that was to do with safety. They they got some um, penalties for their tradies wearing Ye- Yeezys. Oh, Yeezys. No me. Yeezys on the blazer. <laughs> well, that's me out then, isn't it? Uh, so originally, no Crocs on the block. Ben would like to have that uh, rephrased to no Yeezys on the Bleezy. I was sort of like, 
has been a bit cool. I feel like being able to I I test ID Yeezys is cool. Mm. They, I mean, I I know someone with a pair of Yeezys, and I've tried them on, and they are ugly but comfy. They're very <laughs> very comfortable. That's the style it of is. the moment. I know. Uh, okay, so uh, they got half an hour penalty. Didn't there was a lot of talk about these penalties and didn't really result in any majors, did it? They got finished. No. No. Uh, and then Marty got one. For not wearing oh, his boots yes. in the shower. Mm. Yeah. And, he, and that he was, was like, when he got real lippy. He got lippy with yeah. the wolf. Yeah. I like I, I like a good strong wolf. Like he he, yeah. he just doesn't <laughs> when, take when any of this shit. I'm like, that's shit. how to be a boy. I shouldn't yeah. try that. I don't know how to do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um Adam and Stacy, what happened? Oh, they put a light switch in the wet area. That's probably about as exciting as they got for them this week. Yeah. A perception problem. It is a real perception problem. I yeah. also did like Stacy again being like so it's legal. It's like whatever. It's the right. It's the yeah. right switch. It's you just don't code. want it. It's yeah. up to code. And then he's like, "But we don't like it." And she's like, "What if we just do it anyway?" <laughs> I have this theory about the light switch, and the fact that she didn't want to talk about it in the in the moments. I don't mm. think it's that she didn't believe in what she was doing. I think she didn't want it made into a storyline because then it was just going to create unnecessary like dragging out of the. You know, being, it being signed off in there. I think she was uh-huh. just like she was like clued Whoa. into production mm. and was like, I just don't want this to be a storyline. Just don't even mention it. If we don't mention it, they can't make it into something, and we can just get on with it. Clever yeah. analysis. Thank you. Didn't really work though. I don't know for her. <laughs> no, but I think yeah, no, it didn't. It didn't. But they all. But it, it came to nothing. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they moved it up ten centimeters, and everyone was like, Oh yeah, that's all right. Better than sticking it on the outside, I suppose, and going back to the nineteen forties. I've got the note. Hate the bathroom hotel vibes. And I've also got hotel written at least one of the others. There's just like a little bit of a kind of cold sort of like safe but sort of safe stylish aesthetic that is just annoying me a little bit. Alex, as a fellow squeegeer, how Mm. do you feel about the concept of a wet area? I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. There's so much squeegeeing. I don't like the idea of that clammy bath sitting there the whole time while I'm showering. It's just something to knock your head on if you slip. True. And we've seen the ad that's got Michelle from The Real Housewives in it, People Can Slip in a wet area. Oh, and Zach. Yes. And I have slipped in the hallway quite badly and concussed myself um, when I was yelling at the children after they came in while I was in the shower and I came out and I was like, Joe, I'm in the shower, can't you control these kids? And I went, Shit, and I smacked my head. Oh, yeah. But did they, did they laugh or cry? Uh, uh, I cried. <laughs> I split my elbow open as well. Oh, it, was, it was a whole thing. It was a whole thing. I'm fine. I'm fine. I just wanted to bring it back to me. <laughs> Weirdly, it's the right surprised. place for it. Um, but yes, ample squeegeeing because if if you if you have a particularly steamy sesh, <laughs> that could be condensation all over the bath, inside, outside, and all the walls and the glass. Like you're gonna you're gonna be so busy and for so long. It's not even the steam. The water is going to go directly from that shower head into the bath, like yeah. the spray off you, the the ricocheting of water mm. off you onto into the bath. Mm. I don't want to squeegee a freaking bath. No. So you almost need your you need a curve squeegee. Is, is it normal what you do? Yes. Well, it should be. Let's no, be your no, own shower. It's not the same as it being normal. It should be, is what we say. Yeah, I know, but it's two dollars now, an investment in your future. Yeah. <laughs> a stitch, a stitch in time, a squeegee in time saves heaps of money. Saves yeah. your dimes. Keeps so, the shower. Man, you should be writing for Rod Jenden. We you. should get a squeegee sponsor. We should. The amount of work we do. Or we should for big squeegee. <laughs> we should go on the apprentice, innovate a curved squeegee for bath for this trend of wet areas and um Of every show. I this is the one I can most imagine us actually going on. The apprentice. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh anyway. I'm. I love a, a luxury hotel bathroom, but yeah, I don't but that's good. But you don't want it don't every, want you don't want it every day, right? No. I think Marie and Someone James did it. a really nice job on theirs. They did, as they referred to it, an actual proper family bathroom. It didn't have any curved walls. I thought it was going to be a bit dull, but I th- and look, all the bathrooms all were dull. really nice this week. Mm. Yeah, they're all nice. They're all nice. But eight point five this- last score so far. I felt sorry for Ben and Quinn on that because they were like excited and with a shot, and then everyone else got yeah. higher than eight point yeah. five. Yeah. And we just did so many teeny tiny so tiles. Many. Even the floor, this teeny tiny little green. Yeah, too guys. many teeny tiny tiles. I liked <sighs> the teeny tiny tiles, but Ooh. I think there's no way you can do a really good job in that short time. You know. One thing we forgot to mention: 
road was uh, Ben singing the Tile Depot song and really giving it some. Really yeah. giving it a lot, yeah. The other rude thing was all the, I don't, I'm only saying it because it happened in the show, all the squirting chats during the challenge oh, with, that's the, right. with the little water guns. <laughs> that's a rude part. This is a rude part. It's a rude show. <laughs> and Ben did a Lenny Kravitz-style rip of his crotch. Did you notice that? And they had to blur out his red undies. Have and you seen that hung, video? No. And he hung his undies on the... Uh, <laughs> the Lenny Kravitz one? Yeah. No. Nah. It's basically, okay, my favourite tweet ever is things Lenny Kravitz is famous for, colon, one, dick come out on stage, <laughs> two, big scarf, three, singing. <laughs> There's a video of him wearing very tight leather pants and like crouching down and his pants just completely rip and everything just comes out for like a split second and then he just covers it up with a guitar and it's like amazing. So wow. what's he not wearing underwear is what you're saying? Well... Either he wasn't wearing underwear or the undies ripped. The undies well. didn't rip. Undies didn't rip. That did not happen. <laughs> I don't know. He wasn't wearing underwear. Um, Marie and James, absolutely nothing to say on these guys. Nothing. Seem like nice enough people. Very boring television. Yeah, the plank. Only, the only thing I have to say <laughs> about them. What? Did you say plank? They won the plank. Oh, they won the plank, yeah. yeah. But they won the plank in the most Marie and James way. <laughs> like, <laughs> basically, no, they won by default because they, they just built the longest one and everyone else went in the drunk. Why are they so bad at doing the plank walks this year? They were all very short. No one managed to stay on. Just a shocking plank year. It's a real piratical rumbustification, if you will. Excuse me. <laughs> no one? Was no that, one? It's was like that your Margaret Irish accent? No, it's a Ma- Margaret Mayhew book. Come on. Oh. It's a quite a deep cut, but still. Um, so <laughs> the only thing I have noted down for Marie and James was um, how good it was when when they went to the bathroom, Mark's just sitting there glowering oh, on the toilet. Oh, that was great. I yeah. mean, that was more about Mark, though, Exactly, wasn't it? exactly. The only thing that happened of note with them was was actually Mark. There is never a season that goes by where Mark is not sitting on a toilet at some point yelling out, one hour to go! You know who else likes sitting on the block toilets? Duncan, Duncan Graves. truly. Even when we get told specifically, do not sit Well, that on the was toilets. a red rag to a ball. <laughs> I probably should have known Do not take better. any photos. I believe it was recapping the block that we first coined the term kangaroo, which is erroneous because we were referring to how a koala would sit, not a kangaroo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shit, that's so good, though. But it was, uh, you know, in reference to one of the feature back walls um, <laughs> You know, being kind of a bit of a, a, a waste. That was, if you don't get to enjoy that was so funny. We've been sc- you know what else is good? Since I then. know we've talked about it a lot, but the spin off TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Not trip. to go back, but when Jan and I went to the blog, I rewatched it, just revisiting, you know, Ben's season. Mm. <laughs> we did a good thing there. We did a good thing there. If you haven't nice. seen it, Google the spin-off TV invades the block NZ. Should we do it again this year, but just with our <laughs> just with our phone? Because we don't have a TV show. So we're just shopping well, with our phones. Yeah, <laughs> after all the great reviews, <laughs> and just that mammoth audience. <laughs> hey, honestly, these days. That's what I'm saying. We got <laughs> cancelled, basically, or like heavily demoted for an audience which now would make us like top ten <laughs> for twenty five to fifty four. It's so crazy. Legitimately, <laughs> legitimate plug for the fold this week. Willie Jackson, broadcasting minister. Talks to one Duncan Grieve. Duncan really put some hard questions to him. I was very excited by this episode. I even rang Duncan and was Aww. like, need to give you some feedback. Great, yeah, I was not worried. It's like, Jane wants to call me at 8.30 on a Monday. Something terrible is going to happen. <laughs> that, again, that's not boss behaviour, Duncan. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what would the wolf do, you know? <laughs> I just have a panic cry every time I get a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> but I rang to say lovely things about the podcast, but you guys should listen to it. It's really interesting. And you talk a lot about, you know, the the state of um, viewing numbers versus what's happening online and where the money should be going and so on. And well, thank you for the yeah. plug, Jane. Yeah, it's, right. also, it's quite funny. Well, well, he's good talent, I reckon. Yeah, well, yeah. He's good on a podcast. It's quite funny too. Yeah. Quite a, quite a long. Um, while we're doing shout-outs, Heath Davis, amazing episode of Scratched on the spin-off. You can just go on the spin-off, you'll find it. It's it's really incredible, incredible story, incredible episode of Scratch, which is uh a, a, a series about our lost sporting legends. Yeah. And uh, he was literally lost, at least lost to cricket. Like, like he basically, no, no one in New Zealand seemed to be able to find him. And uh, shout out, another shout out, shout out, shout out to uh, Rachel Judkins, who was a researcher on that and just basically called every Davis in the Brisbane phone book until she tracked him down. And he came back with an with a incredible and very poignant story to tell. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, well, that's, that's the shout-outs for today.
Going to be doing the uh, the birthday call soon. No, <laughs> um, it's just we're, no, it, we're going to wind up our wives. <laughs> What else happened? There was uh, some team judging of the bedrooms. Chloe and Ben won that. Uh, got Everyone's just so nice. Everyone's so nice. They? There's no tension. I do like Chloe and Ben though. They're fun. Yeah, they're, they're a fun. fun team. I like the platonic boy girl team. I, I really How enjoy platonic them. is it though? I'm just saying. Oh, you don't have to always. I know, but there's just this. This. I mean. St- it's not Dancing with the Stars. I know, but it's this. There's, there's some kind of like a vibe, isn't there? Or am it's I just, just no? It's fine. Okay. Um, She's a she was walking around with his undies everywhere. She was walking around with his undies, and she does um, take him, you know, teach him about skincare. But that's fine. It's yeah, fine. It's you know what it is? It's, it's just, it's, it's just a little bit of uh, Gemma and Billy. You know, just a little bit of platonic flirting. <laughs> Benta, Benta. <laughs> Gemma and Billy was that was extremely one way flirted to <laughs> <laughs> Um And then we got to judging. Do we need to talk any more about the state of the bathrooms? They were all lovely. Just the sweaty box. Oh, constant yes. references to the sweaty box of yeah. <laughs> Chloe and Ben. <laughs> uh, they all had the same, f- like, f- fixed fixtures and f- finishings and, you know, mm. tap wear and... Even the same curly, like, the zany same... towel hook yes. thing. Yeah. yeah. All, all doing the gold thing, the, the kind of, I don't know what, that, that textured uh, cabinetry. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, just... Ribs. Yeah, but like ribbed. A, like a cherry chocolate orange. <laughs> Remember um, another funny Dylan and Keegan thing when he, they put in that gold sink? <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> Just like completely shiny Donald Trump gold. Wow, your in the memory is amazing. Yeah. Maybe because we've seen it with real yeah, eyes. Yeah, you've seen it with real eyes. And it was real proper gold. Eyes. Real eyes. Uh, I so I'm really I know everything about the Meadowbank season because that was the the tour that I did with um, Dom and JJ and and little Kanye. Wow. Yeah. That was crazy. Remember when we did we, the tour we, of Hobsonville? We did no, Hob- no, no. Morningside. No, Morningside, just up the road. yeah. That was grand. Oh, my God. And we were standing in the bathroom in and, silence in, in like, a wet room with JJ and Dom just standing there going, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, know, and I think at the time we'd we'd sort of regularly written how, about how bad they were and we just didn't know whether we were recognised. Didn't know. She were tense. <laughs> she was ten. JJ's actually just been at the market down in Balmoral uh, just this last week. It was pouring with rain. She covered it on her Instagram. She's down there with mum. Mum does does markets all the time. She's a professional marketer. What is she? What is she trading? Brick a brick. But JJ was selling. JJ was selling all of her old DVDs and promo DVDs and CDs. Um, Feeny was. Feeny was. Sheesh. She, uh, yeah, she had. She sold heaps of stuff. There was, I think, she had some clothes and. Oh, oh my god! god. What down is for this that? market? Down about moral. Down uh, with it. Oh, the flea market. Yeah, that's where Debbie goes. There. I was there too. I was there. That's where Eggman go. Eggman go there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's wrap up this podcast because uh, we have to record another one. Actually, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> we got to talk boating. Um, thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Ti here. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Duncan. Thank you, Cornies. From all over the country, but thank you, particularly thank you, Wellington Warner this Brothers. week. Thank you, Making so yeah. much reality TV. So much. There's still more coming. We didn't even talk about the fact they've announced the Celebrity Treasure Island yeah. oh, first live. We're going to be we're gonna be backlogged and waylaid. It's going to be we, a lot. Uh, Heartbreak yeah. Island's around the corner. We're going to need Island. the evolutions. Boy. That's going to be a scandal. The islands are on. calling. Okay, and we are going to answer... Um, Hooroo, have a good day, have a good evening, morning, whatever it is, whenever you're listening to this. Yep. Bye. From the Spin-Off Podcast Network, you've been listening to The Real Pod. It was hosted by me, Jane Yee, along with Alex Casey and, most of the time, Duncan Grieve. Ti He Butler made it all sound good and Rachel LaRue got us out to the world. Start your day with The Bulletin, a newsletter from The Spin-Off summarising New Zealand's biggest breaking stories and highlighting the best reporting from around the country. Sign up for free today at thespinoff.co.nz slash newsletters. Kia ora, this is Toby Manhire, here to urge you to tune in to Gone by Lunchtime, a podcast with me, Annabelle Lee Mather and Ben Thomas, tackling the world of New Zealand politics, from policy to polling, from scandal to psychodrama. Listen to Gone by Lunchtime, brought to you by the Spinoff Podcast Network, wherever good pods are sold. Kia ora, I'm Duncan Grieve, founder of The Spinoff. You can help us keep all of The Spinoff's award-winning journalism free for everybody by becoming a member today at thespinoff.co.nz slash donate. 
The Spin-Off Podcast Network.